you know Bill, he has uh, been fighting to protect fisheries and water quality in California for over 30 <coughs> years, has chaired the California Sport Fishing Protection Alliance since 1988, and served as its executive director since 2005. He's a board member of the California Water Impact Network, <coughs> and was the Delta. He served as the Delta Keeper between 1995 and 2005, <coughs> and was a founder and chairman of the Committee to Save the Macaulay. Among numerous acknowledgments and awards for his work in habitat protection and, and uh, also an enhancement and fisheries protection and enhancement. So I welcome Bill to the podium, please. California's no water crisis because the state's double promised wasted and equitably distributed flooded water resources. And the, the, the dump is a biological meltdown because the estuary has been deprived of more than half its historical flow. Its hydrograph has been turned on its head, and its waterways used as sewers. Uh, BDCP not only fails to address these issues, it will exacerbate them. First, we need to understand that Central Valley waters are oversubscribed. Uh, there's um, uh, the average unimpaired uh, uh, runoff into the uh, into the delta is about a 29 million acre feet, 33 million acre feet if you consider return <coughs> flows, and yet the water rights to that water comprise 153.7 million acre feet about five and a half times. Um, that is the root of, of much of California's water problems. Uh, since the State Water Project began exports uh, operations in 1967, uh, exports have increased 60% on top of the State Central Valley Project and Delta outflow has declined 40%. Uh, the State and Federal Water Projects have contracted for far more water from the Delta that they can reliably deliver. Uh, the uh, Table Lake contracts for the two projects uh, total um, uh, seven and a half million acre feet, but they can only reliably deliver about a little over five million acre feet, and they knew that when they created it, that's why they have tended to, uh, to divert the North Coast rivers uh, into the Central Valley. Uh, understand that um, uh, the, um, the DWR and, and the Bureau of Reclamation have the water rights uh, Westlands, the Metropolitan Water District, and so forth have no water rights. They have contracts, the variable contracts, to only the water that's available. All of the waters in San Joaquin County are polluted. Uh, the, uh, this is a list of uh, the 303D list, the Clean Water Act uh, uh, list of impaired water bodies that cannot be beneficial, identified beneficial uses. These are uh, the pollutants on the uh, on the main rivers and, of course, all of the waterways and around Stockton and, and so forth. And understand, this is only the tip of the iceberg because, um, uh, you know, we've developed, we, we regulate only about fewer than 200 of the 100,000 plus uh, chemical constituents that are routinely used in national commerce. And, of course, our water quality criteria fails to uh, consider the additive and, and, and synergistic properties of, uh, of uh, chemicals that exist together. The, uh, chronic and sublethal impacts, um, uh, chemical degradants, the breakdown products that are frequently as toxic or more toxic than the original chemicals, uh, and uh, pollutants that bioaccumulate and, and bioconcentrate, and, and many, of them, either there, many of these standards are uh, uh, economic-based rather than health risk-based, uh, like arsenic. Uh, the projects have routinely violated the law, and when I say that, every standard established through public proceedings to protect the Delta is routinely violated. Uh, this chart uh, just simply shows that since 2007, the uh, Salini standards violated in Old River in San Joaquin County, uh, 868 days, but this is just one site for one constituent. Uh, and, and for example, this year, we are routinely casting aside all of the standards, virtually all of the standards established, but we did that last year. Uh, you know, when you go back 91, there were hundreds of violations. I mean, every time we have a drought, all of the standards that have been promulgated uh, for critical year times, assuming taking drought into consideration, are routinely cast aside uh, to divert water. Uh, the Delta, you know, the pelagic fisheries, uh, you know, the, the smelt and, and striped bass, shad, twit tail, uh, threadfin, uh, their populations are down one to two magnitude uh, since the State Water Project began operations in, in 1967. 
um, and the more tropic levels, the zooplankton and phytoplankton that make up the base of the food chain, are down one to two magnitude uh, uh, as, as, as well. Salmon fisheries uh, uh, have declined uh, far below the doubling levels mandated by state and federal law uh, some 22 years ago. I mean, in the Central Valley Improvement Act, uh, the Water Code, Fish and Game Code, winter run levels are about 5.7 percent of that uh, spring run, only about 20 percent of, of, of mandated levels. Uh, even the hatchery uh, supported fall run uh, on the Sacramento and, and San Joaquin rivers are uh, a fraction of, uh, of the mandated uh, requirements of uh, 31 and 25 percent uh, respectively. Now, BDCP. You know, it's really uh, simply a scheme to divert the Sacramento River through 30 mile, uh, six lane underground highway, 12 stories beneath the Delta for export to Southern California. It's an export project masquerading as a habitat conservation plan or a natural communities conservation plan. Uh, the public review documents of BDCP contain 20 more, 20% 20 more pages in the 32 volumes of the last printed edition of the Encyclopedia Botanica. Uh, you know, and it's quite frankly, in 30 years of reviewing environmental documents, it's the worst environmental document I've ever seen. The plan and the EIR, EIS, have been scathingly criticized by the Independent National Research Council, the National Academies, the Delta Independent Science Board, independent peer review panels, the red flag comments of the of the fishery agencies, review comments by the Corps, the State and Water Board, US EPA, uh, environmental groups. I mean, if you want to get a feel for it, just look at the recent scathing review uh, by the uh, Independent uh, Science Board's peer review panel on the effects analysis of, uh, of BDCP. There is no way that this plan can comply with the legal requirements for an HCP and CCP. <clears throat> Looking into the, to the, the, the plan itself, uh, if you look at the modeling in it, the, the median delta, the, the delta outflow will go down uh, from, from existing baseline conditions. Uh, uh, to, you know, the twin tunnels outflow in 2016, we see a decline in delta outflow. X2 will move upstream. Now, X2 is the heart of the low salinity zone. That's the habitat for so many of the pelagic species. It will move it upstream, away from Sassoon Bay, closer to the pumps. PDCP will reduce the, the dilution effects of, of, of the Sacramento River, which is a relatively good water in the, in the system, uh, flowing into the delta. It will divert that around. It will increase the residence time of water within the delta. And of course, you know, that in a sense increases the pollutant con concentration of every pollutant in the estuary and uh, increases the residence time, the time that those pollutants interact with the system. I don't know how this is ever going to surmount uh, Clean Water Act challenges. It decreases salmon cell survival for winter run. I mean, you know, with, uh, without the tunnel, because of global warming, we're going to see a 1.4% decline. Uh, but with the tunnels, it'll be a 4.3% decline. Spring run, again, it, uh, BDCP will decrease the, the, the survival of spring run salmon slopes. Fall run salmon, fall run salmon on the San Joaquin River, it's the same story. BDCP will reduce already, you know, uh, degraded fisheries. In, in 2009, when the state legislature passed the uh, Delta Reform Act, uh, the State Water Board was mandated to go through a hearing uh, uh, using the best science, uh, scientific information to determine what flows are necessary to protect public trust resources of, um, of the Delta. Uh, actually, the Department of Fish and Game was also mandated. They went through a parallel proceeding, but I'll just talk about the state board. Same, same thing. Uh, you know, extent, extensive testimony was presented by the fishery and the water agencies, by uh, academic and independent scientists, by the public. Uh, the report that the board issued concluded among other things, that we need a, a return to a more natural hydrograph, 75% of unimpaired delta outflow January to June, 75% of unimpaired Sacramento River inflow November to June, and 60% of unimpaired San Joaquin River inflow uh, February to June was crucial, fundamentally necessary to fully protect public trust resources. Now, 
Seven years later, I mean just re more recently, the State Water Board asked BDCP to model uh, a more modest proposal uh, that included uh, uh, increased delta outflow, increased north delta bypass flow, cold water pool management, and a 55% unimpaired flow uh, at, at, at Freeport that's impaired close to 75% of the 2009 uh, report. Uh, and they did that. And that is known as alternative eight. <clears throat> this is extracted from from the table out of the uh, EIR EIS. Uh, now, the no action alternative says that in, in, in uh, that that exports because of uh, global warming. I mean, the total uh, outflow will, will be increased to 16.4, and exports would be about 4.4 million. That's less than than, than once. That's because of the effects of global warming. There are four, you see, alternative four, which is a preferred alternative, that's BDCP. You've got H1 through H4, those in the decision tree process, this adaptive management process, see, they don't know what they're gonna do, they just give them a range of what they're gonna do that they're gonna decide later after they built it. But the decision tree process, all of them, includes that outflow will decrease and that exports will increase except for one that, that says that exports will increase by 27,000, 27, uh, exports will decrease by 27,000 uh, uh, acre feet. Uh, whereas alternative uh, A, of course, you know, it substantially increases uh, both uh, outflow and, redu well, and reduces exports. And, and here's the here's the modeling on, on, on that. <clears throat> alternative A is to far right side, you know, says that the reliable water that can be exported from this estuary, if you protect fish, if you protect fish, it's about three million acre feet of, a year. And that's been the numbers that we have thought about for, for 20 years, that the estuary at about 2.8 to about 3.1 3, 3 million acre feet is about all that can be reliably exported from the ish estuary and, and maintain its biological integrity. Uh, alternative eight uh, would increase uh, uh, outflow. And again, on the far right, it, it, it would be, the outflow would be about 17 million acre feet uh, on average. And, and uh, uh, to, to, to really look at that, that you look at uh, uh, this comparison, and actually uh, over the present, uh, uh, outflow would go up about 1.4 million acre feet, export would go down about 1.3 million acre feet. And that's what is required if we're going to protect uh, uh, the biology of, of, of this estuary. Now, I want to talk about a couple of myths of BDCP. Like, you know, in the last 30 years, uh, uh, though, though, first of all, those, uh, uh, in the last 30 years you haven't seen, with the exception of Jones Track failures in, in, in the Delta Prime, uh, and, and because the levees have been substantially upgraded. They're not at, the, at, at, at quite the risk that they, some would like to have you believe. But in any case, BDCP would only protect the first 30 miles of a 350 mile delivery system that is entirely seismically uh, at risk. I mean, you know, in the key point, San Luis Reservoir, I mean, you know, sitting up there with a fault line through it that they're gonna have to redo, and the big threat is over the Tehachapi's. It ignores the fact that 80% of the cost, 100% of the lives lost are in the Delta, but it does nothing to, 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 to pr protect that. Uh, Southern California has three years of storage. I mean, you know, so, uh, the duration of a water supply interruption in, in case of this hypothetical earthquake that's never occurred, I mean, it certainly it could happen, you know, is, 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 uh, is, is likely to only be uh, six months to a year. We believe that, 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 that water supply security is best, best achieved by local self-sufficiency, and we could spend all half a day talking about that. Uh, I will talk a few, make a few observations on the current crowd. Uh, you know, it, BDCP will protect against a hypothetical earthquake that hasn't occurred. But you know, according to DWR, DWR there have been 10 multi-year drought to large-scale extent, extent in the last 100 years. Uh, that's 40% of the time. Uh, BDCP does absolutely nothing to protect against drought. So BDCP proposes to spend over 50 billion to protect us against something that hasn't occurred while ignoring disasters that regularly occur. The North Delta fish screens will protect fish. Well, first of all, <clears throat> BDCP has refused to replace the obsolete South Delta fish screens with new state-of-the-art screens, even though more than half of Delta, Delta exports, especially in drier years, will still be pumped <clears throat> from the South Delta. Now, the old CalFed 
record of decision mandated that new state-of-the-art fish screens be installed. But the state contractor said, we're not going to pay for them, and it was just kind of dropped. I mean, there are ways that we can reconfigure Clifton Court. We can get both laws to be broke. We still have some, some, some um, trash rack problems. But there are solutions that we can seriously upgrade those screens. And between, you know, what, 2000, 2011, uh, they salvaged over 130 million fish. When you consider the predation of Clifton Court, uh, that's, uh, that's seven to ten times more. It's probably over a billion fish. That, and, and, and that's just the tip of the iceberg because none of the, the larval stages of fish or eggs can be, can be salvaged or caught and they just pass through and carry. Uh, but BDCP would place three new massive diversion facilities in the direct migratory corridor of listed somonids and add risk to all listed species. Understand, sensitive life stages of listed species are present in the vicinity of the tunnels, new diversion points, 12 months a year. Uh, the now Delta, Delta, Delta screens are experimental in nature. They've never been employed. They're not like the Calusa screen. They've never been used. They will require variance from existing uh, screen criteria. Uh, there's 22 studies that will have to be conducted to see if the, the design is technically feasible. Half of those will occur after they're built. Uh, uh, NIMS, uh, National Marine Fisheries, requested that they be phased construction, uh, build one to see if it works, but uh, BDCP said no, it would delay things. Uh, and in any case, no fish screen can prevent can prevent entrainment of floating eggs or larval smelt, uh, are sensitive life stages, and they're not protective. And, and we can we can again spend half a day talking about uh, the fish screens. <clears throat> New habitat will restore fisheries. Well, first of all, you need to understand that, that the delta has been its present configuration for a hundred years. I mean, we haven't lost habitat recently. I mean, it basically. Uh, in its present configuration, uh, fisheries collapsed only after the, 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 the state and federal projects began diverting huge chunks of habitat, and that's what water is, and, and the zooplankton, it's habitat we're sending south. Uh, and the history of habitat restoration efforts is, has not been good. Uh, most uh, restoration of uh, the the, history, the, the restoration that's occurred in the Delta has inadvertently created habitat for undesirable species, for predators and noxious weeds. I mean, you know, in preparing comments, and we've got hundreds of comments, technical comments, that will be going in, over 100 pages on the history of habitat failures, you know, in the, in, in, in the Delta. Uh, certainly the comments by uh, uh, the agencies, Independent Science Board, the National Academies, uh, uh, the fish agencies, um, uh, have characterized BDCP's habitat uh, claims as biased and, and wildly optimistic, unsupportable. I mean, it's, yeah, it, you need to read those. In agency talk, they are scathing uh, uh, comments on, on, on the assumptions of, of, of the habitat claims. Uh, habitat it cannot, it, it is not a substitute for flow, but the flow is habitat, and that's what we're exporting. <clears throat> and then there's this thing about adaptive management. You understand, we're going to build it and then we're going to adaptively manage it to find, discover how we operate it later. I mean, you know, we've, but we've been adaptively managing this delta for the last 30 years. I mean, CalFed was adaptive management, the OCAP and, and under it, the WOM. You know, those are adaptive management processes. Um, and we have just about adaptively managed the delta out of existence. Um, you know, the National Research Council's review of the adaptive management in, in BDCP observed that, you know, adaptive management is a really wonderful concept that frequently fails. And they gave this whole litany of reasons that it fails, and all of them are present in, 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 in BDCP. I mean, the bottom line is that the projects are not going to give scientists the ability to determine how much water they deliver to their contractors. You know, they're not going to, politicians and and, and decision makers are not going to give up the reins of power to a bunch of pesky scientists, as the governor refers to them. There's, been a, there's a looming battleground here. Uh, you know, uh, DWR has been trying for five years to get onto uh, Delta Properties to do the, uh, uh, the, the seismic work, the uh, archaeological and biological investigations and all of that, which are necessary for the EIR. You know, they told the judge under sworn judge testimony that We've got to get on there. We can't go forward until we get on and do these studies, and these studies will take two years. Well, 
they didn't have it, and 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 and, and so the EIR does not have it does not have this information to evaluate the impacts. And for five years, they, they haven't been able to get on there. I guess they've decided that all this information is critical. And, that's crucial to the adequacy of a law of, of an environmental document isn't necessary. We'll see. But, um, and of course, the, the, the lawsuit against the Delta Stewardship Council, Delta Plan has already been filed, and after a year, we're still engaging in, in, in preliminary skirmishing. We haven't even gotten to the meets of the of, uh, motion practice yet, really. But ahead of that, you've got the certification of the, of the EIR, the approval, of, 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 of the Stewardship Council approval of, as, a, as an AC, but you've got the, 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 the state boards changing the diversion point, the three phases of the state boards of a Delta plan, the 401 for, uh, certification, the 404 permit, each one of those is going to be litigated. I mean, it's just not going to get by because they, BBC, BBC people have to survive each one of these challenges. We're not going to go quietly into the good night and give up on this estuary. And if necessary, we can push them up. And we can adjudicate the state's water uh, uh, through a 15-year program. And in summary, i just to say, you know, it's the official policy of the state of California that the co-equal goals of water supply reliability and delta restoration and BDCP proposes to meet this goal uh, of, of Delta restoration by diverting the Sacramento River under the Delta, reducing inflow and outflow, further degrading fisheries and water quality, and they ask us to trust them to build the tunnels now, figure out how to operate them later through a backdoor adaptive management pro process that has failed for 30 years, and they're going to allow the public, the public to pay for billions of dollars for the 100,000 acres of habitat to replace the lost flows even though the habitat assumptions have been scathingly criticized by every reputable scientist. Thank you. Thank you. Hands, microphones, if they're ready. Does anybody have a question for Bill? In the back? The uh, approx approximately. How much low water that we're shipping south through the uh, aqueducts, whatever, the channels? How much of that water is actually going for public drinking water rather than farming? Very well. The majority of it is going to uh, uh, to the west side of the valley, uh, 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 Westlands Kern, uh, which represents about three tenths of one percent of the California gross domestic product. You know, probably 20, 25 percent go over the hatcheries and uh, and supply. Uh, uh, you know, the full reservoirs in, in Southern California. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, and that's just, I mean, that's, that's both systems together. I mean, the CVP virtually very little uh, goes for, for uh, 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 municipal industrial. Uh, uh, the state water project, the balance is closer, but. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Did anybody else move up with back here? Thank you. Part of what I was hearing was that it's kind of a bait and switch that we're talking habitat restoration, but what the subtext really is is we want to send more money south, or more water south. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and then you were talking about how habitat restoration really doesn't work. And I'm wondering if we weren't talking about the other part, sending money, do you think restoration doesn't work? We, 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 we be honest. I mean, I'm, I'm a fisherman. I like habitat. Uh, <clears throat> certainly, the loss of, certainly, of shamanic fisheries is because we've lost virtually the vast majority of it of the upstream habitat. And for Salani, we need in rivering uh, uh, habitat restoration efforts. We, I think we can do a better job. I'm talking about uh, intertidal uh, uh, restoration of, of delta habitat. You can't, you've got to have flow. I mean, even in, in, in upstream habitat restoration, you can't just put habitat in there unless you have an adequate amount of water coming through it. And, and, and water is habitat, and they don't seem to get that. You know, that, that you can create habitat, but you've got to have flow through. I mean, a lot of the habitat we're going to create in the estuary, you know, we're, it's not it's going to be a carbon sink. It's not going to give food, provide food in the, in the main channels. Uh, there are just a lot of problems with it. And if you look at the history, I mean, the habitat that's been constructed in the estuary, you know, you'll find that it's, 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 it's not home. It's not good habitat for the, for the native species that we're trying to restore. 
You had mentioned about the fish wings not being able to protect against larvae and eggs. What about invasive species of plant seeds, like the hyacinth? <coughs> well, I don't know. Uh, but um, if BDC feed goes forward, you all better love hyacinth and, and Azaria densa because that's what's got to be <laughs> out here in the delta. But you know that's, that's an interesting question. I don't know about the about the seeds of it, but uh, uh, but but I'd be glad to send the highest of sound. Me too. And yes, question, please. Well, maybe everyone knows the answer to this question, but why not desalinate for water needs in Southern California from the ocean and come from the ocean to Southern California? Well, that's what we've been advocating. I mean, look, Southern California has a multitude of options in conservation, recycling, reuse. Um, um, I mean, they, 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 they've got full reservoirs right now. They've got a three-year supply of, 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 of water. They have enormous opportunities Desalination would, would, would play a role in that. Certainly, San Diego and others are are, are, are committed to that. Uh, but but the, 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 we believe there's an economic advantage. I mean, one of the problems with BDCP is going to suck up all the money, and we're not going to go to the alternative strategies that promote regional self-sufficiency. So um, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities out there, uh, and we're going to have to come. With, we are, California is going to have to learn to live within its means. You know, we, we, we can't continue to live beyond the, the, the sustainability of our, our, our ecosystems and, and, and supplies. Hoover Dam, the supply so much to Southern California and Arizona is down 100 feet. Also, they're lowering the pumps on the Sacramento River to get water into the Sacramento system because the river is down there. Thank you. Well, I, I understand. I mean, you know, this is. This is uh, the, 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 the third year. What happens if we have a fourth year? I mean, what if we go through like 87 to 92 or 23? I mean, you know, there are, you know, this, we would go, we could venture into a terrain that we've not experienced uh, uh, in, in, in a long time, ever experienced considering the demands on water. All right, well, let's thank Phil again. Thank you.